All right, this is the first in a set of four videos that I plan to make. These problems correspond to one of the packets that I gave you, um, a set of practice problems. My suggestion for each one of these problems is for you to try as much as you can on your own at first and then kind of consult this video to reinforce and check your work. In this problem, you're given a square loop of wire that's inside of a uh, field that is uniform in direction, but varies according to time by this expression here. I'm going to try my hardest to simply stick to this script over here and see how far I can carry us. The first one is pretty obviously easy. What is B? It's simply that expression up there. We can move right on then to solving for the magnetic flux. Notice, by the way, I haven't even written down what's being asked for in the problem. Notice, by the way, I haven't even written down what's being asked for in the problem. These problems are all so similar to each other that there's always a certain list of things that you're going to be asked to solve for. So I'm just going to jump right into the Faraday's Law stuff. This complicated flux integral is made easier by three major things. Number one, the wire is a square and it never changes its orientation. Number two, the field is uniform in direction. And number three, the field doesn't vary spatially. It has the same value everywhere inside the loop. It only varies according to time. So that doesn't matter as far as this 2D spatial integral is concerned. So this expression simply becomes B multiplied by A. It's also pretty obvious which part of the flux is changing. It's this exponential part of the magnetic field expression. Notice that this expression does still vary with time. That's because unlike some examples that you've seen previously, this magnetic field is not constantly changing with time. In fact, its rate of change is changing as characterized by exponentials. Now that I've got the induced EMF, maybe it's time to look at what was being asked for. Notice we've already gotten the first thing solved. The flux is simply negative 0 0.18 e to the negative 4t. As for the direction of the current, we should take a moment and think about what's going on here. Remember that it would be naive to assume that the direction of the induced current would make inward facing field lines. Sometimes it's not that way. In this case, we have a field that points out of the page However, the magnitude of that field is decreasing over time. So the induced current in the loop is going to try to restore that initial field. So you could use right hand rule for wires and just look at each wire segment and figure out that the wire has to be carrying current in the counterclockwise direction in order for these field lines to be out of the page. Or you could apply what I've called the Brian Offit right hand rule. Brian Offit was a student of mine who uh, was a swimmer for Stanford a long time ago, 
who figured out that he could use a different right-hand rule for these problems just about every time, and it would always work. The way the Brian Offit right-hand rule works is the thumb of your right hand becomes the direction of the field lines that you want, and your fingers curl in the direction that the loop should carry a current. Either way, you can see with a little bit of inspection that the current in the loop has to be counterclockwise. As for the current, we need to know that the resistance of the loop is 6 ohms, and then this becomes very easy. As for the total energy, well, this is a frequently asked question for these kind of problems also. And so all you have to ask yourself is how much power is used and then how much energy is used. The last thing I'll point out about this problem uh, is that I like that it's numeric because it gives you a chance to get a gut feel for what kind of numbers we're talking about here. This is, you know, a lab table sized loop, 30 centimeters on a side, and this is a reasonable resistance for a wire that's got one or two or a few turns in it to have. This is a fairly strong magnetic field. Two Teslas is pretty strong. And yet, Despite that being a strong magnetic field, you only dissipated a tenth of a joule of energy in this circuit for all time. 